Zhu Xiaolong is a poet, translator, and famous for the Inspector Chen series of crime fiction novels. He's here as a guest of the Confucius Institute of the University of New South Wales and an adjunct professor with us as well. Zhu Xiaolong, your Inspector Chen is unique, I think, as um, the only detective, the only literary detective of the city of Shanghai. Yeah, he's only detective working in Shanghai, and I believe he's also the only detective who writes poems in the, in the novel. By the time you've read one of, one of the, your novels, in fact, you've also read a whole series of poems, which some of which are classical poetry, some are written by Inspector Chen, which means they're written by you, of course. Uh huh. And, um, but there are others as well, I believe. Uh, you know, originally I really tried to quote as many poets as possible. In my words, I tried to smuggle in poems into the novel. But, you know, my editor vetoed the idea, saying it's too expensive to quote. So, as a result, I can only quote the classical Chinese poetry. I translate them myself, or the poem I write myself. Okay, so this makes your, um, your novels, and they're not, not all of your works, of course, are, are crime fiction, but it makes them um, somewhat more literary and, uh, and I would even say more intellectual than most uh, crime novels. Um, if I could just quote uh, uh -huh. a really intriguing phrase from uh -huh. Red Mandarin Dress, um, on page 232, you've quoted um, a classical uh, Chinese author saying, when the fictional is real, the real is fictional. Where there's nothing, there's everything. Now, could you explain that and maybe tell us how that, re how that refers in some ways to what's going on in your novels in terms of um, representing real life of China uh -huh, uh -huh. in fiction? That's a very good question because nowadays in China, people often say that reality could be even stranger than fiction. You don't even have to make up stories in a lot of uh, corruption stories and, uh, and the people, you know, do all this kind of, it's so-called human flash search on the internet. All the details about, you know, the things happening in China. Lucky for me, because as a writer, I, I won't have to worry about rights block because so many things happening, right? And also so many things you can say weird, strange, absurd, but that's what's happening right now. Okay. Yeah. And the perspective you bring is, as they often call you, a global writer. That's kind of like because you spent 20, 30 years in the US, uh -huh. um, you're coming to Shanghai where you were brought up. Mm -hmm. as a boy, you're coming to it with fresh eyes, but you also come to it with sometimes uh, more Western knowledges like uh, Inspector Chen might use psychoanalysis uh, to solve a crime, and this is not a very Chinese thing to do. Um, on the other hand, you also have Chinese knowledge getting into the, into the stories. That is true. You know, that's also something I really try to do because you know, having living Having lived in the, in the West for more than 20 years, I believe my, it's not only the distance you know, from China, but my perspective. If you lived in some place all the time, a lot of things you may have taken for granted, right? You don't see mm. it's strange, it does not make sense. But for me, you know, after so many years, and also with a different perspective. So sometimes I try to combine in my work a combination of both inside and outside. I'm certainly uh, learning a lot about uh, China and about Shanghai, especially as um, it seems to be a city which, of course, has a, uh, a kind of romantic heritage for Westerners. But um, so rapidly changing, um, I think uh, it's fascinating the way you're your writing deals with real knowledge. I, I really feel as if I'm learning about real things going on. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, the, the burgeoning economy, the, um, and all the, uh, all the cultural, but all the, also the cultural heritage that remains in many ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. Writing these books, it's almost on my personal effort to come to terms with this rapid change. You know, this inspector does not always have answer to all the problems 
all the new you know, situation. So he's trying, and, and I'm trying with him, you know, about the change in the city, the change in the Chinese culture, especially nowadays, you know, with this kind of new materialistic or consumerist, you know, change that has swept over the city. So it's, it's for me, it's also like, you know, part of my personal effort to adjust to all these change, the right environment. Okay, maybe we'd like to finish with, uh, with you reading something from uh, one of your books or a poem, perhaps. This one may be a little bit creepy, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's Why is it creepy? It's, it's, uh, it's a poem actually written by the murderer. Okay. Yeah, but, but of course it's written by me. So if you want me to read, I can do that. And, uh, and let me just say before you do that, uh -huh. uh, you will just, to, f to close this off, you will hear little echoes of T.S. Eliot and maybe even Shakespeare in this poem. Uh, Shakespeare and also the, it's, this is a poem, yeah, it's Hamlet. It's, it's really from Hamlet. And uh, it's also a poem echoing from Pasternak, you know, the Dr. Chuaco, oh. at the end of the poem, yeah. Mother, I have tried to make the far-off echo yield a clue to what is happening to me. In the old mansion, people come and go, seeing only what they want to see. The recall of the red mandarin dress wears me out, flashing in the flowers, your bare feet, your soft hand, the stress of memory stripped me of waking hours. But we are flattered, framed in the zoom of one moment, click, and a cloud and rain approaching fast, a doom for gloom, scurry across horizon again. Oh, that is all I know, all I see. Mother, you drink the cup for me. Wow. Thanks very much, Chu Shalong, for Thank you. being with us here. Thank you.